All right, today we are going to be talking about increasing and decreasing behavior and functions. And as a bonus, we're going to discuss maximums and minimums. So first, an increasing function, as your x values get bigger, your y values also get bigger, creates a positive slope. So your graph is going up, essentially, as you read from left to right. Decreasing then, as your x values get bigger, your inputs increase, your y values are decreasing. This is going to create a negative slope. So as you're reading from left to right, your graph will be going in a downward motion. If your graph is neither increasing nor decreasing, your graph is constant. So as your x inputs get bigger, reading left to right, your y values remain the same. This is going to create a slope of zero or a horizontal slope. So looking at these five graphs, we need to identify intervals of increasing, decreasing, or constant. So reading from left to right, this graph is going up. It is creating a positive slope, a positive rate of change. So we're going to say that this function is increasing always. Looking at this next function, as we read from left to right, our graph is always going down. So we're going to say decreasing always. As your x values are getting bigger, your y values are getting smaller. This next one, if you're reading from left to right, we've got some switches happening. So here, my y values are going up until I get to this point. Now all of a sudden my y values are going down until here, and now they are increasing again. So this middle part, as my x gets bigger, y is getting smaller. To help us identify, we'll call this A and we'll call this B. We would say our graph is increasing from negative infinity to A in union with B to infinity. And our graph is decreasing from A to B. Please note that I'm not including A and B as endpoints. Right? Technically, there's a turnaround point happening at B and a turnaround point happening, happening at A where it's neither increasing nor decreasing. So you can't actually include A or B in your interval notation. Moving on, as we move across our graph, we're going up, increasing until we get to about this point. And then our graph is not going up, nor is it going down, which means that our graph is being constant. So again, for notation's sake, we'll put a C right there. So we would say increasing from negative infinity until C. And then we've got constant going from C to infinity. Last one, as you read from left to right, your graph is going up, increasing until you get to about here. And then your graph switches. We're going down. We'll call this D. So we'll go increasing negative infinity to D. I don't know what happened with the pen right there. And decreasing from D to infinity. All right, so we got this concept of maximums and minimums. It connects with our increasing and decreasing. So first, a maximum is a Y value that is greater than all other range values on an interval. So this on an interval is important. You're talking about one little piece of your graph. So relative to everything else around it, it is higher. The absolute then comes in, in comparison with all of the maximums you've identified, which one is the absolute biggest? Absolute by definition can only have one. Maximums are higher values than other range values on an interval, which means that these occur when you switch from increasing to decreasing. So on a graph, our function was increasing, now it's decreasing. This right here creates some sort of a maximum. Minimums then are going to be y values that are smaller than all other range values on an interval. So again, we're talking about one little piece of the graph relative to things around it. Are your values higher or lower? Talking about absolutes then, we have our smallest y value that a function reaches in its entirety. This is the absolute lowest y value. Again, by definition, absolute can only mean one. So once you've identified your minimums, 
you want to then figure out which one is the absolute lowest. Minimums occur when your graph changes from decreasing to increasing. So our graph is decreasing, now it's increasing. That would be a minimum. All right, so let's identify maximums and minimums and then classify them as relative or absolutes. So to start, we'll talk about maximums. We said those change, those happen when you change from increasing to decreasing. So decreasing, now we're increasing, switching to decreasing. So this is some sort of a maximum. Decreasing, increasing the rest of the way. So now we have to decide, is this the absolute highest point that your graph reaches? Well, in this case, our graph is going off to infinity. So this is not an absolute, it is simply a relative maximum. I'm gonna leave that in red to mimic the pink right there. So now let's talk about minimums. Minimums happen when you change from decreasing to increasing. So we're decreasing, and now we switch to increasing, so there's a minimum. Increasing, decreasing, now we're increasing, so there's a minimum. Now, out of these two, which one is the absolute lowest? Well, what's the lowest value that you reach for your y values? It's gonna be this one right here that is the absolute lowest y value or range value on this graph. Moving on, looking at maximums first. So we said we wanna switch from increasing to decreasing and that's gonna happen right here. There's no other places with maximums. Now we have to determine is this an absolute or is it relative? Well, is this red dot the absolute highest y value that you obtain in this graph? And yes, it is. So we're gonna label that one in yellow. Minimums then happen when you change from decreasing to increasing. Well, this is just always decreasing, this piece. So we don't have any minimums, and if we don't have any minimums, that means we cannot have an absolute minimum. These are both going forever to negative infinity. So there is no absolute min. Next thing we want to talk about, back to maximums. So we're starting here, we're increasing, switching to decreasing, decreasing back to increasing. And that's the only place that we have that switch. But you also have to remember that our definition of relative means on an interval. So relative to things around it, are there other high points? Well, this point starts off and immediately everything else gets bigger. So that one's not gonna be a maximum. Over here though, you have all of these values getting bigger until you stop. So this dot right here is technically a higher range value than everything relative to it. So now we need to classify one of these as the absolute highest, one of these is just a relative. Well, which one is the absolute highest range value? That's going to be this one right here. So now talking minimums, we said minimums happen switching decreasing to increasing, so we've got a minimum here. But again, relative to things around it, this dot right here, this range value, is lower than all of these. So this also counts as some sort of a minimum. Which one of these is the absolute lowest? That's going to be this one right here, because this value is lower than this value on the y-axis. All right, I think we're catching on, hopefully. So switching from decreasing to increasing, we would call this some sort of a minimum. This would be some sort of a maximum, increasing to decreasing. Are either one of these absolutes? Well, is this the absolute highest value you achieve on your graph? No, because this is going to infinity. Is this the absolute lowest value you achieve on your graph? No, because this is going to negative infinity. So we will call both of these relatives. Keep in mind that for your relative maximums or your absolute maximums, relative minimums, absolute, minim absolute minimums, the x value tells you where the y value is the actual maximum or minimum. So identify intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant. I think we're getting pretty good at this. This piece is going to be decreasing. Again, I don't include the ends of my intervals because that's where it's neither decreasing nor increasing. It's a turnaround point. So we'll say from zero to one, union with two to infinity because that arrow is going on. And we've got a constant, 
between 1 and 2 because there is a zero slope, neither positive nor negative. Okay, so let's get back to this concept of maximums and minimums. We said a maximum occurs if you change from increasing to decreasing. So is there ever a time where we change from purple to blue? No, there's not. Hopefully you answered that for yourself. So we do not have any maximums. Minimums change from decreasing to increasing. So is there ever a time we change blue to purple? Yes, there is. And that's going to be this one right here. And that actually ends up being an absolute minimum because it is the absolute lowest value. So we're going to say there is an absolute minimum at x equals 0. Remember, x tells us where. So then the minimum value is also 0 because the y value, the range, is 0 at that point. All right, we're moving on to our calculator. Help us out a little bit. List any maximums or minimums and identify intervals of increasing and decreasing. For time's sake, we're going to leave off the increasing, decreasing. I'm going to let you do that on your own. So I've got our graph here. Just like with our zeros, if you go to second calc, you've got these options, minimum and maximum. So let's start by finding minimums. It's going to ask you left and right, just like it did on the other one. So it looks like we have a minimum somewhere at about a half. So something to the left of that could be zero. Something to the right of that could be two. It wants us to guess. I said I want to guess at 0.5. And our minimum is at 0.215. And the minimum value, get my calculator back, is 0.887. Around that, right? Yep. So now if I go back, do that again, second calc, this time we're going to look for a maximum. Looks like it's at about negative one and a half, so we'll go negative three. And we'll say zero. We said it's negative 1.5, seems like a good guessing point. Happens at negative. 1.549. So that's where. And the max value itself, looking at the y, again, we're talking about the range, 3.63. Mm, one more decimal. Use three decimals when you can. Okay. Again, intervals decreasing, increasing, and constant. I'll leave those to you. But you should know that your turnaround points, where we had our maximums and minimums, these are going to create part of your intervals. All right, this last one I'm going to ask you to pause the video and use a calculator to find all maximums and minimums and the value of x where they occur. So again, the y value is the actual max or min. The x tells you where. So pause the video. Work those out. Hopefully you took the time to do that. And here are your answers. Okay, again, rounding to three decimal places when you can is preferred. This one apparently I only rounded to two. Maximums, changing increasing to decreasing. Minimums, changing decreasing to increasing.